Hello all, this is Haseeba. Welcome to today's session on fourth module, which is input modeling. So, so far under input modeling, we have discussed about what do we mean by input modeling and what are the, what do you mean by data and what are the different ways of data collection, right? So, in the different steps under data collection, we have studied that first step is we have to collect the data. In the second step, we have to identify the appropriate distribution right so then in the third step we have to find out what are the different parameters which are associated with respect to the distribution and finally we have to check whether that particular data is valid right by applying different types of tests right so that is we will be discussing about goodness of fit test right so the third step the third step in input modeling is parameter estimation first step was data collection second step is to identify the different types of distribution and the third step is to estimate the parameters so once the distribution is selected so distribution is we can select any type of distribution so far we have studied negative binomial binomial geometric poison right so uniform log normal exponential Ex log normal exponential so many different types of normal distribution so any one of the distribution we can select so once the distribution is selected the next step is to estimate the parameters of the distribution so parameters of estimation is nothing but we have to find out the preliminary statistics that are required to estimate the parameters of a hypothesized distribution that means we have to uh, check what is the value of the mean and the variance right so sample mean if the observations in a sample size n are x1 to xn if at all the observations are x1 to xn then the formula for mean which is give x bar is given by x bar is equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n xi divided by mean right so we know that what is mean mean is nothing but the average of the values right so you have to find the average of the xn values to find the average of the xn values i will make use of the summation sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi divided by the number of values then we have the formula for variance if the observations in a sample size n are x1 to xn and the mean is given by x bar then the variance formula is what variance formula is nothing but every value minus n into x bar square right so sigma i is equal to variance is s square and standard deviation is square root of variance right so variance s square is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi minus xi minus n x bar the whole square or we can write it as xi square minus n x bar the whole square divided by n minus n n minus 1 for discrete data if data are discrete and we have and have been grouped in a frequency distribution right so if at all the data is a discrete discrete means the data the the sample is occurring at a different intervals of time that your distribution is not continuous right so at different intervals of time we have different types of data then it is called as discrete data if the data are discrete then the formula in the formula for mean we have to apply the we have to multiply the frequency also right so because we are considering the discrete data and it is grouped in a frequency distribution then we have sample mean x bar is equal to sigma j is equal to 1 to k fj xj divided by n right so this is the formula for your calculating mean for discrete data with which has frequency distribution the same way for variance also we'll be multiplying the frequency with xj so we will get sample variance is equal to s square which is equal to sigma j is equal to 1 to n fj xj square minus n x bar square divided by n minus 1 right so where here i am taking the k k value is equal to number of distinct values of x and fj is equal to the observed frequency of xj of x here i'm taking sigma j is equal to 1 to k right so k is nothing but number of distinct values of x and fj is the observed frequency values of xj of x right so for grouped data again we have uh, for discrete data two formulas for mean and variance the same way for grouped data that means if the data is placed in some class interval right so we have already there you have already studied about the problems on class interval where you will be telling that say for example in the range from 5 to 10 right so this is the number of frequency right so like that if the data has been arranged in a class interval then the sample mean is given by x bar is equal to sigma j is equal to 1 to c f j m j divided by yeah right so again we have to take the frequency 
which is occurring within a particular class interval into consideration. So sample variance formula is given by S square is equal to sigma j is equal to 1 to c f j m j square minus n x bar square divided by n minus 1. Right. So where f j is nothing but observe the frequency in the jth class interval. Right. So for group data, what we are doing, we are grouping the data in with respect to different class intervals. Right. So and for every class interval, we are finding out the frequency value. So fj will be equal to observed frequency in jth class interval and what is mj mj is midpoint of the jth interval right and c is nothing but the number of class intervals so how many class intervals you have right so that is taken by the variable c mj will indicate the midpoint of your jth interval and fj is the observed frequency in the jth class interval right so these are the different estimators for a distribution which are often used in simulation. This is repeatedly asked exam question. You have to remember all the formulas. What are the different estimators used for distribution in simulation, right? So the different estimators which are used for distribution in simulation is for every distribution, we have the suggested estimators, right? So for Poisson distribution, the parameter is alpha and the suggested estimator is alpha is equal to X bar. For exponential distribution, the parameter is lambda and lambda is equal to 1 by x bar. For gamma distribution, the parameter is beta and theta, where theta is equal to 1 by x bar and beta will be used the table value for a given m. Normal is mu comma sigma square, where mu is equal to capital X bar and sigma square, which is the variance is equal to S square, right? So log normal. The parameter is mu comma sigma square where mu is equal to x bar sigma square is equal to s square so these values are calculated after taking the uh, log of the data right so log normal of the data then we have weeble distribution so weeble distribution parameters are alpha and beta where beta naught cap is equal to x bar x bar by s and beta j cap is equal to beta j minus 1 cap minus f into beta j minus 1 divided by f dash into beta j minus 1 right so and alpha will be equal to 1 by n sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi beta cap right so this is not required f of beta so next we have beta distribution where i have beta 1 and beta 2 are the parameters where i have psi of beta 1 plus psi of beta 1 minus beta 2 is equal to ln of g1 right so g1 is the di gamma function right so psi of beta 2 plus psi of beta 1 cap minus beta 2 cap is equal to ln of g2 right so g1 will be given as phi i equal to 1 to n xi to the power of 1 by n and g2 is equal to phi of i equal to 1 to n 1 minus xi to the power of 1 by n right so all these are the different parameters that are basically used for or that are basically suggested for a distribution right so these are the suggested estimators which are used for distribution right repeatedly asked exam question what are the different estimators which are used for simulation so the last step the last step for input modeling is to uh, check whether the data is fit right so how do you check whether the data is fit or not for simulation by having the goodness of fit test these provide the helpful guidance for evaluation for evaluating the suitability of a potential input model right so in order to check whether this particular model is model is suitable for simulation or not we go for goodness of fit test right so it is important to understand the effect of sample size so you will be asked only two problems here goodness of fit test one is chai square test problem the other is kolmogorov smirnov test problem right so coming to the first one it is chai square test so chai square goodness of fit test it is basically used for testing the hypothesis that a random sample of size n of the random variable x follows a specific distribution Right. So under chi square goodness of fit test, what we are doing, it is basically used for testing whether the hypothesis that a random sample of size n, right? So any sample of size n of the random variable x, it follows a specific distribution or not, right? So the, the random sample of size n for any random variable x, the variable can be anything, right? So for any random variable x, whatever sample you are getting, whether that particular sample follows a specific distribution or not. So this test is valid for larger sample size and for both the discrete and continuous assumption. The test, uh, the chi square test, it is basically used for large sample size and also for both discrete and continuous assumption when the parameters are estimated by maximum likelihood. Right. So this problem is very simple. So what we are doing, we are finding out the we are we are calculating the 
at uh, chi square value, right? So by taking the y minus ei the whole square by ei, the same formula what we have used in our third module for chi square test, right? So that is procedure begins by arranging the n observation into a set of k class intervals, right? So here we are basically grouping the data whatever we have got in terms of k class intervals and the state, uh, test statistics that is chi naught square, right? So this is chi naught square will be equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to k y minus ei the whole square divided by ei this is the formula right so same formula is used here also what is y y is nothing but the observed frequency in ith class interval and ei is expected frequency in that particular class interval y is observed frequency in the ith class interval and ei is expected frequency in the ith class interval so the expected frequency at each class interval is calculated by so whenever you are calculating the expected frequency you have to make use of the formula ei is equal to n into pi right so ei is equal to n into pi where pi is nothing but the theoretical hypothesis probability that is associated with the ith class interval right so pi value you have to calculate then you have to multiply that pi value into n so that you will get your, your ei value which is the expected frequency value so it can be shown that the chi naught square approximately follows the chi square distribution with k minus s minus 1 degrees of freedom where s is the number of parameters of the hypothesized distribution estimated by sample statistics right so you will understand this k minus 1 s minus 1 degree of freedom when we solve the problem right so because a chi square will be calculated for n minus 1 degree of freedom the same way for chi square goodness of fit test it will be calculated for or since we are dividing the data into k class intervals so we are, we are taking it as k minus s minus 1 Right? So, where S is nothing but the number of parameters of the hypothesized distribution. So, there are two hypotheses here also. Right? So, H0 is nothing but the way the, the data is according to the uh, chi square right so the it, it confirms it confirms to chi square test h1 is here the random variable does not conform to chi square test right so if at all it is the random variable x if at all it is h0 that means the random variable x conforms to the distributional assumption with the parameter given by the parameter estimates right so if it is h1 that means the random variable x does not conform the critical value of is given by chi square of alpha comma k minus s minus one right so this is nothing but your degree of freedom on which you are evaluating the data for goodness of fit test the null hypothesis h0 is rejected if chi naught square if at all it is greater than so chi naught square if it is less than and the critical value then we are accepting the data as it is fit data if at all chi naught square if it is greater than the critical value then we have to reject that particular data right so this chi square uh, this a uh, chi square test it is basically recommended for a different uh, sample size of n right so i can have 20 50 100 or greater than 100 so 20 means we will not use the chi square test if at all it is 50 right so if at all is 50 i can have the class interval of 5 or 10 if at all it is 100 i can have class intervals from 10 to 20 if it is greater than 100 it is nothing but square root of n to n divided by 5 right so then i have let us move on to the problem on chi square distribution right so chi square test for poison distribution so question will be asked like this this is the first problem problem one the number of vehicles arriving at a junction in a five minute period was observed for 100 days right so the number of vehicles which are arriving at a junction in a five minute period every five minutes every five minutes right number of vehicles which are arriving at a junction you can take any junction say for example if i take rr nagar junction so under rr nagar junction what i am doing i am observing the number of vehicles which are arriving for um, which are arriving for five minutes i am standing at the junction and observing the number of vehicles right so the number of vehicles which are crossing that junction so like that i am checking for this particular or a crossing of the vehicles in a five minute period for how many days for 100 days and the results are tabulated as follows right so it is we assumed that arrivals for follow a poison distribution we are assuming that we are making use of the poison distribution with the parameter alpha is equal to 3.64 right so this is basically used to calculate the critical 
value alpha is given by 3.64 so use the chi square test and determine whether the assumptions can be accepted at a 0.05 level of significance right so we have to perform the chi square test and check whether the assumptions can be accepted at alpha level of 0.05 significance right so what they have given number of arrivals as 0 to 11 frequency is 12 10 19 that means the zero vehicles crossing is 12 time it has happened only one vehicle crossing for five minutes we are observing and this is nothing but the number of vehicles which are crossing that junction right so maximum we have 11 vehicles crossing the junction and that has occurred with a frequency of one Right, so solution go like, goes like this. We have two variables, H0 and H1. These are called as the hypothesis variables. H0 says that the random variable is poison distributed and H1 says that the random variable is not poison distributed. Right, so these are the two hypotheses. Then what we have to do is, we have to make use of the formula for poison distribution. We know that the formula for poison distribution is what? E power minus alpha, alpha to the power of x divided by x factorial, right? So the PMS, the PMF, PMF stands for probability mass function, the PMF of the poison distribution, the poison distribution formula. We know that P of x is E power minus alpha, alpha to the power of x divided by x factorial and it is zero otherwise. So first what we have to do, they have given us the alpha value. Right? So we have to use this alpha value because they are telling that the arrivals are poison distributed with the parameter alpha as 3.64. Right, so use that 3.64 value and for x is equal to x value they have given here number of arrivals which is 0 to 11 right so use the value of a 0 to 11 and we have to calculate the probability of x right so what we have to do is first we have to make use of this formula p of x is equal to e to the power of minus alpha alpha to the power of x divided by x factorial substitute the value of alpha as 3.64 and x value as a 0 right so you'll get it as e to the power of minus 3.64 3.64 to the power of 0 divided by 0 factorial right so e power minus 3.64 you will get which you value you will get it as 0 0.026 right so the same way you have to calculate for p of 1 so p of 1 will be equal to e power minus alpha divided into alpha to the power of x right so alpha to the power of 1 divided by 1 factor you will get some values right so like this you have to note down all the values which you get for probability of x then what you have to do you have to calculate the expected frequency so expected frequency formula you know it is given as n into pi right so here n into pi what is n here here the data is you know, observed for 100 days right so therefore n value is 100 so ei is equal to n into pi so i have to multiply 100 into 2.6 right so every time 100 into 2, 100 into the pi value which is 0 0.026 right so for xi which is 0 to 11 i have to multiply 100 with all the previous poison distributed values i have calculated so we will get the expected frequency values right so then what we have to do we have to check the expected value whatever is given in the question they have given that expected value should be greater than or equal to 5 right so if it is greater than or equal to 5 then you are accepting right so we have to check the value of ei which is greater than or equal to 5 right so if it is equal to 5 i can accept directly if at all this is lesser then i have to combine right so how do we do that first write down xi right so we'll have 0 to 11 then write down oi y is as given in the question whatever is given in the question that is your oi right so these are nothing but the observed frequency values and the above one is the x x value right so 0 to 11 and oi is 12 to 10 right so for every xi whatever corresponding expected frequency value you have got right after multiplying n into pi the same value you have to write it as a column right so 2.6 9.6 whatever i got i have written right then in the question they have told that the expected value should be greater than or equal to 5 right so what i do is first i will start with 2.6 2.6 is less than 5 so if at all it is less than 5 what i have to do i have to combine it with the next value so 2.6 will be combined with 9.6 if i add these two i will get 12.52 right so 12.2 is greater than or equal to 5 yes it is right so then i will accept it right so whenever i am combining my expected frequency value the same way i have to go into the previous column i have to combine my observed frequency values also when you are combining 2.6 and 9.6 here you will get 12.2 the same way you have combined here two values the same way here observed frequency also you have to combine 12 and 10 so if you combine these two you will get it as 22 
right? So now you have to calculate OI minus EI the whole square by EI, right? So when you are calculating that, you have to take this combined value, which is 22 minus at 12.2 divided the whole square divided by 12.2, then you will get 7.87, right? So then I will come and I will check the next value. What is the next value? 17.2, it is greater than or equal to 5. So accept directly. Next come to 21.1, it is greater than 5, so accept it. 19.1, it is greater than 5, accept it. 13.8, greater than 5, accept it. 8.4, greater than 5, accept it. So if at all it is lesser, then only I have to go and combine with the next value. So 4.4 4. 4 is less than 5. So what I'll do, I'll combine this 4.4 with the next value, which is 1.9. So when I combine 4.4 to 1.9, it is greater than 5, right? So these two together, I can accept it, right? So, but there are other values also, right? So if I combine all these three values, still I will not be able to get it as greater than 5. So what I will do, I will combine 4.4 with the 1.9. Then again, I will add it with 0.2 to 0 0.8, 0 0.1, right? So they'll keep on checking right so then i will do backtrack so backtracking means what you are adding 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 0.2 to 0 0.8 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 if you add you will get 1.1 1.1 .1, 1 .1 to 1.9 if you add you will get it as 3 right so again a 3 with 4.4 if you add you will get it as 7.4 so i'll be combining all these values right so why i'm combining all these values because first i will check 4.4 4.4 is less than 5 so i will go with 1.9 right so the value which is below 4.4 so these two i will be getting it as greater than 5 but the problem is i have to accept the below values also right but the below values if i combine all these three i will not be able to get it as greater than 5 so what i will do i'll use the backtracking i'll combine all these three values with the fourth one right so i'll come from down so all these three values plus fourth one still i'm not getting it as greater than 5 again i will add it with the previous value right so now this whole together set is greater than 5 right so 7.4 is greater than 5 right so once you get all these values now you have to find y minus ei the whole square by ei right so here you are combining how many values five values if you are combining here the same way in the observed frequency also we have to combine the bottom um, the bottom most five values that is this is the first value second third fourth and fifth if you add this you will get it as 17 if you add this you will get it as 7.4 now find out y minus ei the whole square by ei right so y is 22 22 minus 12.2 the whole square divided by 12 point next 19 minus 17.2 the whole square by 17.2 17 minus 21.1 10 minus 19.1 8 minus 13.8 7 minus 8.4 afterwards you will take this 17 and 7.4 so 17 minus 7.4 the whole square divided by 7.4 so these are the values what you get add all these values the summation you will get it as 27.68 right so once you get all the summated values now this is your final chi naught square so this you have to compare with your critical value right so to find that critical value first we have to find out the degree of freedom so we know that k is equal to right so how to find out the k right so k is nothing but what out of these 12 values right so 0 to 11 we had so 0 to 11 is how many values we have 12 values and what is the expected value they have given so expected value should be greater than or equal to 5 is what they have given so 12 minus 5 means what i will get it as 17 right so 17 minus or 12 minus 5 is nothing but what 7 so 7 means um, the given value i have divided into 7 class intervals you can see that 22 is one value 19 is the second value 17 is the third value 10 is the fourth value eighth is the fifth value seven is the sixth value and 17 is the seventh value that means the data whatever we have got we have divided into seven class intervals how did we divide the given data minus the expected value so 12 minus 5 got it as 7 right so k minus s minus 1 and is the degree of freedom right so 7 is the value of the class interval minus yes yes is a variable which is your for parameter statistics right so like we have said here yes is what s yes is basically used for right so it is the number of parameters of the hypothesized distribution which are estimated by the sample statistics right so here in this problem we are taking only one parameter which is alpha right so therefore always usually s will be equal to one right so s is nothing but the number of parameters we have taken so here the number of parameters is one therefore k minus s minus one degree of freedom right so that will be equal to 12 7 minus 1 minus 1 so 7 minus 1 minus 1 i'll be getting the value as 5 right so now i have to find out chi square alpha comma 
k minus s minus 1 right so they have told that you have to find out alpha with a critical value of 0 0.05 right so in the problem they have specified that the critical value of or the level of significance is 0 0.05 right so chi square of 0 0.05 comma k minus s minus 1 which is 5 right so find out make use of your chi square distribution table go to 0 0.05 comma 5 right so you'll get one value right so check that value with your chi naught square what you have got right so if this value if at all it is less than the critical value right so chi naught square this we get it as right so this we get it as 11.1 right so when i refer my table right so when i refer my chi square distribution table i will get it as the, the critical value is 11.1 .1. now i have to compare whatever value i have got right so this is 27.68 so this chi naught square whether if it is lesser if it is lesser then it is not rejected right so since here i have my chi naught square is greater than my critical value right so what i am doing i am rejecting the distribution right so h naught is rejected the data is rejected right so let us go back to once again this is very very important repeatedly asked exam question right so this is i will be asked for 8 to 10 marks right so chi square test for poison distribution they will give the values all like this right what you have to do first you have to take the number of arrivals first since it is poison distribution you have to make use of the formula for poison distribution which is nothing but e power minus alpha alpha to the power of x divided by x factorial right so use that value use that formula then x value is 0 alpha value they would have given 3.64 so consider that and find out p of 0 p of 1 p of 2 p of 3 p of 4 once you have found all the values of for p right so then you have to go uh, you have to calculate the expected frequency right so to calculate the expected frequency the formula is n into pi right so that means every pi value whatever you have calculated should be multiplied with n n is nothing but the 100 days whatever they have given so multiply that you will get the expected frequency once you get the expected frequency you have to tabulate it right so xi oi ei y minus ei the whole square by ei Right. So while you are tabulating, you should always consider what is the expected value they have given. Right. So if the expected value is greater than or equal to 5, they have given. Right. So if the expected value should be greater than or equal to 5, then you have to accept. So every EI column, you have to check whether it is greater than or equal to 5. If it is greater than or equal to 5, directly you will be accepting. If at all it is lesser, then you have to combine with the next value. Right. So then add those two, then you have to accept. Right. So here. I can accept it directly right so when in the last one if i combine these two i will get it as greater than five but the last three values also i have to accept right so that is why i'll be adding all the values and finally i will get one value which is greater than or equal to five right so finally i'll be accepting what is the formula for chi square distribution it is y minus ei the whole square by ei right so use this formula and then you will calculate your ei Right. So then you have to calculate your k value. K value, how do we calculate? We know that the observed frequency value they have given from 0 to 11. So 0 to 11 means totally 12. So 12 minus the 12 minus the expected values, which is 5, they have given in the question. So 12 minus 5, I will get my class intervals as 7. Right. So that means I have divided my, my data into 7 intervals. So 22, 19, 17, 10, 8, 7. 70 right so totally seven class intervals i have divided the data right so once you get this k value what you have to do you have to find k minus s minus one right so which is a seven minus what is the value of s yes is nothing but your parameters here i have taken only one parameter which is alpha therefore it is one so seven minus one minus one which is five right so by default for any chi square distribution if it is there s value will be equal to one because in chi square distribution for we are considering chi square test for poison distribution and under poison distribution will have only one parameter which is alpha right so that is why s is always equal to one right so once you get that you have to find out chi square of alpha comma k minus s minus one they have told that you have to find for 0 0.05 level of significance so 0 0.05 comma k minus s minus one we got it as five so make use of the chi square table and you will get it as 11.1 .1, right so if you don't have uh, uh, in the exam there is no need to go and verify in the table because they will give you the critical they will give you the level of significance value right so compare whatever answer you have got that is the sigma of y minus ei the whole square by ei whatever value you have got with the critical value if it is lesser then it cannot be rejected if at all it is greater than the h naught is rejected Right. So this is how you have to solve the problem for goodness of fit test.
right so that is chi square test for poison distribution right so the same way you have one more problem so solution is already there so here they have given the frequency of occurrence right so here directly they have given it as number of arrivals they have not called it as so frequency of frequency of arrivals here they have given right so but right so here also frequency only but they have not given the alpha value right so let us see this problem so the records showing the number of accidents at a junction is studied and reported for the past 100 months right so 100 is nothing but your n value accident per month 0 to 6 right so the number of zero accidents frequency is 35 1 it is 40 1 it is 13 right 3 6 4 4 5 number of accident is 1 6 number of accident is 1 right <coughs> If you add this all the frequencies you will get it as 100 right so because 40 75 75 you have then 6 plus 4 is 10 10 12 15 right 75 75 you will get it as 80 right so 80 then you have 13 plus 7 13 plus 7 is 20 so 80 plus 20 means you'll get it as 100 right so apply the chi square test to test the hypothesis that the underlying distribution is poison use the level of alpha as 0 0.05 so you have given the they have given the level of significance but they have not given the level of alpha which has to be used for poison distribution right so we know that the alpha value that is the suggested estimator which is alpha is equal to mean is equal to variance in case of poison distribution right so alpha is equal to x bar right alpha is equal to mean right so we have already studied that in our poison distribution so alpha is equal to x bar right so that formula is sigma xi into fi divided by n this is level of significance they have not given the alpha which we have to use to calculate the poison values right so that is why we have to calculate it like this by taking xi into fi by n right so since they have given the frequency multiply it with the x value divided by the number of value which is 100 so now we got it as 1.11 right so h naught is the random variable is poison distributed h1 is random variable is not poison distributed and according to poison distribution we have p of x is equal to p power minus alpha alpha to the power of x divided by x factorial so this is our formula so use this formula take the value of alpha as 1.11 right so using the value of alpha as 1.11 we will get it as p of x x is equal to 0 to 6 p of x e power minus 1.11 into 1.11 to the power of 0 divided by 0 factorial right so like that for every value of 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and alpha is equal to 1.1 use this formula and calculate p of x once you do this take the value of e is equal to n into pi multiply this with 100 you will get some values for ei right so once you get this what you have to do you have to take your xi you have to take your xi right so xi you have to take then write oi ei right so expected value here they have given it as if it is less than 20 are grouped into one right so they have to given the expected value as 20 right so if it is if the expected value is a 20 right so that means that means i can accept if anything is less than 20 then i have to group that is what they have given right so they have to be grouped right so based on the expected value what is given in the question you have to solve 33.29 right so this is greater than 20 so i will accept 36.62 greater than 20 i will accept 20.14 again greater than 20 i will accept 7.48 less than 20, 2.03 less than 20, 0 0.4 less than 20, 0 0.08 less than 20. Again, I will backtrack, I will add all the four values. Finally, I will get some value, right? So this is less than 20, whatever value I have got. So again, I will accept it, right? So all these values you have to add and then you have to accept, right? So once you are accepting, EI the same way you have to group your Y also and then you have to accept right so finally Y minus EI the whole square by EI right so take these two right second one third one and finally fourth one right so again you have your value whatever you get right so that value you have to compare with your 
chi naught square value right so whatever you get the r value if it is lesser then it cannot be rejected if it is greater value then i have to reject right so here i will get chi naught square is lesser than right so this is your chi naught square is lesser than your critical value alpha right so since it is lesser i will say that it cannot be rejected right so like this you have to calculate chi square test for poison distribution the same way we have chi square test for exponential distribution that we will take up in the next session thank you